Welcome to the Alaska Weather Show. I'm meteorologist Peter Chan coming to you from the National Weather Service on this Sunday, June 5th, 2022. If you'd like additional weather information on top of what I provide, you can always go to weather.gov. Weather.gov is the National Weather Service's online presence. Uh, you'll bring up a map there of the continental U.S. and you can point and click on that particular map and get forecasts, watches, warnings, advisories for anywhere in the country and so much more additional information. As of uh, early to mid uh, this Sunday afternoon, we have severe thunderstorm watches covering portions of the Central Plains in Nebraska, Kansas, far eastern Colorado, as well as a flood watch for southeast Kansas into southwest Missouri, and hot temperatures down in the state of Texas, south central Texas, and into around the Big Bend area. They're expecting high temperatures in the upper 90s to just over 105 degrees. But here close to home, it's been especially a uh, warm period of weather this past couple of weeks here, especially south central areas into the northern panhandle. There has been a little cooling going on there in the panhandle and not quite as warm uh, south central areas. And that'll be the case here as we head into the early part of the week. But continued warm and very dry across the interior, especially up through the Yukon Valley. Just a little bit of cooler air is backdoored in uh, from the can uh, Canadian Arctic into uh, the uh, Yukon Flats area, but other than that, very high to extreme fire danger continues there through the Yukon Valley areas of the interior, just below red flag warning, simply because we don't have either really strong winds, really high temperatures, or uh, the threat of uh, wide, a more widespread threat of dry lightning from uh, scattered thunderstorms. But something uh, forecasters are going to be keeping a very close eye on. We'll see spotty showers and a few isolated storms across uh, the south southern interior, especially along and south of the Alaska Range. Some of that moisture spilling westward over the west arm of the Alaska Range into the southwest interior. And then we're going to watch another wave work its way uh, northwestward across the panhandle on Monday, bringing additional rain. And that system will eventually bring some rain uh, to south central areas, including the Kenai and Anchorage Bowl by Tuesday. Looking at uh, the webcams here, the FAA uh, new exit, low clouds. It's been a breezy, chilly afternoon there along the Arctic coast. Temperatures uh, running a couple degrees below or above freezing with easterly winds gusting at times over 30 miles an hour. And as we go further uh, toward the east and southeast, Fort Yukon, clear as a bell, but very, very dry. Sunny skies, temperature early this afternoon was approaching 60 degrees. But you can see uh, just how uh, bright it is up there. And things are definitely starting to look a bit dry. At least the temperatures are staying a little cooler in at least the Fort Yukon, Yukon Flats area. Now, as we go further south and west, some of that moisture is spilling over the Alaska Range, working its way uh, into the southwest interior, Lake Clark Pass, the east entrance. We see those building cumulus clouds, a sign of instability. There could be uh, a few scattered showers or an isolated thunderstorm pop up there along the Alaska Range as a result of that moisture. Cape Spencer, uh, the outer uh, area west of uh, Juneau there along the uh, Panhandle Coast is seeing partly sunny skies, but more rain will be moving up through that area as we head through the day on Monday. Fire weather update, very important. Uh, no red flag warnings at this time, but it's close for the interior. There is low humidity, moderate winds, but not quite hot enough or not enough of a threat of any thunderstorms at this point for the interior, especially the Yukon River Valley, to warrant uh, any type of red flag warnings. But we do expect a few thunderstorms, uh, not only this afternoon evening, but again tomorrow for south central areas uh, and the southern interior along and south of the Alaska Range. A little of that moisture, as I just showed you, is spilling westward uh, into the southwest interior as well. And that could get up around the Kilbuck and uh, Kuskokwim Mountains that could help get those buildups to trigger an isolated storm. Outlook is, though, for some rain and cooler temperatures moving from the Panhandle on Monday into south central Alaska by Tuesday. But continued warm and a bit on the breezy side for the interior as we go through midweek. And looking at the fire danger, 
we have uh, extreme fire danger highlighted in red. We focus on grass this time of year because it is the best carrier of fire once a fire starts. And we can see uh, the area there up uh, north of the Alaska range of the Yukon Valley is primed uh, for some very high to extreme fire danger. Areas further south, it's uh, for tomorrow at least, because there is gonna be more cloud cover present, temperatures not quite as warm as the past week. And we're gonna have some scattered showers and maybe an isolated thunderstorm at least uh, the fire danger will have for the time being uh, lessened there across southern parts of the state. Quick check of the uh, river breakup map at this point. Essentially, the rivers are all open with the exception of right there along the uh, far northern Arctic coast. We still have a flood advisory in effect for the upper Copper River Basin, including the Gulcana River and the road along Lake Louise until early Monday afternoon, forecasters, the Anchorage office will reevaluate the situation as to whether or not that flood advisory there for the upper Copper River Basin needs to be extended. Nevertheless, though, uh, caution is urged if you're getting out doing any type of rafting, canoeing, fishing on area rivers and streams, they remain high because of all the snow melt from the record snowfall we've seen across much of the state this past winter. On the satellite imagery, the interior, uh, a lot of clear skies. We're starting to see some cumulus buildup uh, in and around uh, the Alaska Range and uh, areas of the Susitna Valley, Talkeetna Mountains, and then uh, north there of Dillingham. Uh, so keep in mind, there could be uh, some scattered showers or an isolated thunderstorm pop up yet this Sunday afternoon and evening, and again on Monday. Further north, low cloudiness areas of fog there along the Arctic and northwest coast, breezy conditions, east-northeast winds gusting at times 25 to over 30 miles an hour, making for a rather raw early uh, summer type afternoon. Other parts uh, of the state, uh, there are some breaks in the cloud cover there across areas of the panhandle, but the next uh, push of moisture will be working northward across the panhandle, especially later tonight and during the day on Monday. And further west, uh, low pressure continues to retreat well south of the eastern Aleutians and just your typical pattern of low cloudiness in areas of of lighter fog there along the Aleutian chain uh, surrounding the colder waters of both the Bering and North Pacific. Did uh, want to mention too on Saturday Yakutat set a record high temperature of 82 degrees beating the old record uh, of 78 and there was about a 15 to 20 degree temperature drop than an hour after uh, the front uh, passed through there. Same thing happened across the panhandle but earlier on Saturday late morning and afternoon. Looking at the weather map this afternoon, a trough of low pressure kind of arcs across the Alaska Range, very weak high pressure along the north central Gulf Coast, and a lagging trough up there through the west and northwest side of the state, but rather brisk easterly flow with areas of low clouds and fog, not just along the Arctic coast, but also areas of the Chukchi Sea down along the west coast out over the uh, eastern Bering. And as we go through tonight, that trough of low pressure just kind of lingers across south central in the vicinity of the Alaska Range. And on Monday, there could be additional uh, scattered showers and isolated storms popping up along that from the southwest interior, back up along and especially south of the Alaska Range, dry up through the Yukon Valley, but more rain across the Panhandle. And that area, rain will be working its way westward and eventually be moving into the Kenai Peninsula, Anchorage Bowl, areas of south central on Tuesday. It'll be the cloudiest, wettest day we've seen, at least in the Anchorage and south central areas in a while. It's been a remarkable warm, dry stretch. Looking at low temperatures for Monday morning, 40s to near 50 in the Panhandle. Again, mid 40s to a few areas staying above 50, like within the Anchorage Bowl Monday morning. Temperatures uh, a bit cooler in the Panhandle, upper 50s to 60s. Uh, across south central areas, uh, maybe not quite as warm there up through the uh, Susitna Valley as it has been certainly in the past week or two. Instead of 80 degree readings, we'll be keeping it down by a few degrees and maybe still only around 70 in Anchorage. And temperatures, uh, Tuesday morning lows, 40s, uh, lower 50s Anchorage Bowl, and then 40s to low 50s there in the Panhandle. Temperatures uh, should come up a little bit there as the rains depart on Tuesday in the Panhandle back up into the 60s. But cooler temperatures mainly in the 60s across South Central with a cloud cover in areas of light rain or scattered showers. And temperatures across the uh, far north uh, Arctic coast below freezing, mid 20s, uh, generally uh, upper 30s to 40s there, Yukon Valley. Warmest temperatures are gonna be down toward the lower half of the Yukon Valley on Monday, still getting up into the mid upper 70s in some areas. 
Cooler weather, uh, Seward uh, Peninsula along the coast, they're only 38, though 68 at Nome. And then along the Arctic coast, we expect readings below freezing again, uh, temperatures near, uh, near 40 to 50 there in the Yukon Valley. And again, warmest temperatures will be from around Fairbanks, uh, uh, McGrath southwestward in the mid to uh, upper 70s across the southwest coast Monday morning lows in the 50s in some of the interior 70s to near 80 and cooler out in the 40s to near 50 along the Aleutian chain and then in the lower mid 50s here across parts of the uh, Kuskokwim uh, basin and then Tuesday afternoon still 70s where it's not cloudy out there in the lower Yukon Valley. Quick check, temperatures are still expected to average above normal across south at west Alaska and south central going into the mid-month with precipitation below normal along the west and southwest but slightly above normal through the southeast and panhandle. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Here's your aviation weather if you have a flight planned early in the week. Uh, starting out, uh, the main weather features still we do have the remnants of a ridge of high pressure in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere, keeping warmer temperatures across, uh, especially the southern two-thirds of the state. Uh, it's not going to be as dry, though, along and south of the Alaska Range. We're going to see a couple few waves here through uh, midweek work their way westward, first across the Panhandle, uh, and then uh, across the, the uh, Kenai Peninsula and on up to the southwest interior. So that will keep the threat of either some scattered rain showers and isolated thunderstorms going on and off, especially with the daytime heating or even little uh, areas of rain that will work their way westward. By Monday afternoon, we do anticipate possibility of scattered showers, isolated thunderstorms, especially along the western half, the Alaska Range down toward uh, Bristol Bay and uh, on up into the southwest interior, lower Kuskokwim uh, Basin. And uh, across the Panhandle, uh, an area of rain lifting uh, through the northern areas toward Yakutat. And then as we uh, look out toward the uh, western Gulf areas of IFR, as well as uh, extensive IFR along, especially uh, there the eastern uh, central Aleutian chain. Tuesday morning, IFR conditions up there along the north slope Arctic coast. Also areas of IFR along the uh, inner channels, uh, inner uh, coastal mountains there of the Panhandle and into areas of uh, the southern coastal interior along the east side of the Kenai and Kodiak Island. And then Tuesday afternoon, uh, still possibility of uh, isolated thunder there across portions of the southwest. Otherwise, MVFR conditions are anticipated, especially along and south of the Alaska Range, uh, with areas of rain and rain showers. And for Anatuvik Pass on Monday morning, MVFR conditions will exist north there of the north entrance, but otherwise uh, VFR, especially there uh, through the Central Pass and areas southward. Same thing for Adigan Pass. Generally, VFR conditions though are anticipated. Further south and west, Lake Clark and Merrill will see VFR conditions on Monday, but the potential for uh, a scattered shower or isolated thunderstorm developing, especially with the afternoon heating. Same thing at Rainy Pass. A scattered shower or isolated thunderstorm could develop in the vicinity of the pass uh, for Monday uh, afternoon and evening. And uh, for Windy Pass, look for VFR conditions with isolated uh, thunderstorms or a few showers popping up, especially uh, west there of the pass. Isabel Pass, as well as Mentasta Pass, should generally see VFR conditions there in the morning. Mentasta Pass, though, will have some MVFR, especially there along and uh, south of the south entrance to start out the day Monday. Tanita Pass should generally see VFR conditions on Monday, though MVFR conditions could develop there up through the mountains with probably some cumulus buildups. And then Portage Pass will see MVFR conditions at the east entrance in the morning giving way to VFR. Otherwise, VFR conditions are expected throughout the day, especially there the western half and west entrance of Portage. Finally, the north end of the uh, Panhandle up there at Chilkoot and White, we expect VFR conditions in the morning to give way to IFR conditions as moisture lifts up some rain showers, lower ceilings lift up uh, from the south. Looking at the uh, freezing levels aloft, uh, they are at 8,000 feet or higher across uh, the southern half of the mainland uh, into the far northern parts of the Panhandle. They fall off though to below 2,000 feet along the Arctic coast and uh, they uh, bump downward to around 6,000 feet there as you get out through the eastern and central Aleutians. As far as any icing potential, there could be a little uh, isolated moderate icing with uh, some of the uh, uh, denser cloudiness and uh, light rain that's pushing through the panhandle uh, on Monday between 9 and 15,000 feet, extending down toward Haida Gwaii. 
and then a, a few widely scattered thunderstorms possible along the western Alaska range uh, toward uh, the southwest lower Kuskokwim uh, basin. And upper level jet stream winds, 95 knots there along the Gulf uh, North Pacific interface, otherwise winds relatively light coming down through 700 millibars. And 3,000 foot winds uh, there through parts of the panhandle, 30 to 35 knot. Uh, southerly winds uh, at 3,000 feet aloft. Also winds pulling off the northwest Arctic coast to 35 knots out of the uh, east. And the greatest threat for some turbulence will exist in pockets. First along the uh, panhandle, uh, especially central southern outer coastal areas there surface to 6,000 feet. In the interior uh, north of the Alaska Range, central Yukon Valley surface to 5,000 feet. And then along uh, the south side of Norton Sound we could see uh, some isolated turbulence uh, there surface to 4,000 feet. So that wraps up your flight weather. If you're able to get out, please have a safe flight. Hello again, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service with another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. And joining me today are not just one, but two people, both with the last name Stevens, which is even more fun, but no relation. We have Eric Stevens mm -hmm. from Gina mm -hmm. and George Stevens, who is a mechanical engineering student from the University of mm -hmm. Alaska Fairbanks. Did I get that right? Yep. Awesome. And today you guys brought a really cool toy or I should say tool with you. It's a sandbox. But why are you guys working on a sandbox? Well, it's part of our senior design project, and we were approached by um, EPSCOR to build, build this from, for them. Mm -hmm. They uh, uh, had a proof of concept that they developed years, years, about a year ago, I think, and um, the, uh, uh, they wanted a more robust ver version that they mm -hmm. could pack onto a plane and take places. And it's a handy learning tool for kids and, all, and adults. So you're a mechanical engineering student. You've built a traveling sandbox for the experimental program to stimulate competitive research EPSCOR, and Gene has facilitated this. But why do we need a traveling sandbox? Well, the, the uh, prototype was such a big hit that uh, they decided they wanted another one, actually two, that, they could act that would be easier to travel with, you know, um, possibly marketable even. Okay, so this is a traveling sandbox that's got a lot of bits and pieces and, and a computer hooked up to it. What is the computer doing with the sand? The computer actually uses the Kinect sensor to read the topography of the sand or the shape of the sand, mm -hmm. which, and then the computer translates that into information which it projects using a projector onto the sand showing topographical lines and which is representative of the shape of the sand. Okay, so this is a live mapping tool? Yeah. It's interactive. As you're moving your hands through it, it is actively following and changing the lines to fit what you're doing. That sounds like something I could have in my backyard. Yep. It'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> so you guys had to change the design a little bit to make this more Alaskified, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, how'd you do that? Well, um, the original was made out of basically lumber and Simpson strong tie type mm -hmm. stuff. And we re rebuilt it to make it lighter and basic and basically more transportable we can pack it down to a fairly small size and it can be loaded onto a plane and flown anywhere in the state which you guys did today and you yep. have plans to take this in other places of alaska right yep we're actually going to be headed down to homer with it later today okay very good eric how mm -hmm. does this fit into uh science learning around alaska well you know what i think it is a tool and it is a toy and yes. it brings out a smile from an eight-year-old oh, yeah. and the smile from a 48-year-old with oh, yeah. that inner eight-year-old yes. wanting to get out. The, uh, the sandbox, it's an interactive learning tool that teaches us how topography in the three dimensions is related to, say, a two-dimensional mm -hmm. map. More about that later. Just like George was saying, it's got a connect sensor, not just for video games anymore. It can sense out the, the lay of the land there, yeah. feeds that information in the computer. The computer identifies that, sends a signal to a, pro a projector to send topographic land lines to map over that that uh, lumpy ground so right. you get a three-dimensional topo map out of it and my favorite thing about it this is the thing that stops people at the the trade show they stop at your booth and, and sure. don't leave is that you run your hand through that sandbox and it responds in in real time it remaps yeah, cool. the, top, the topography as you get to be Mr. Tectonic Plate Drifter <laughs> there. You can make things how you want. Well, what if we made a really high mountain here and a low valley there, and the lines adjust to what you did? It's a learning tool because it, yeah. it shows you that connection between 
these two-dimensional topo lines and, and what's really out in Alaska. And Alaska's a place with all kinds of topography. Mm -hmm. You know, we're from the Great Plains where your topo maps tend to be just like blank pieces of paper, but Alaska is particularly gifted in this regard, and, and this tool helps us, I think, learn more about our state, really. Absolutely, and so this is going to enha enhance uh, STEM learning, the science, technology, engineering, and math in, in many different uh, locations around Alaska, Then this would be something that kids and teachers can get their hands on. Mm -hmm. It sure is, and I mentioned the uh, it's, it's like fly paper at a booth that, <laughs> or, or at the uh, science potpourri, when we had Greg's original version of this sandbox, and okay. that one was made out of scraps of wood, and it, it was a prototype, but even that one, before it had some of the refinements that, that George and crew have made for this newer, right. um, upscaled, maybe a 2.0 version of the sandbox, okay. even that one was so attractive to people, it just demonstrated that this, this has potential to be a learning tool, an outreach tool, an education tool um, that can now is portable and can go places in Alaska. Um, of course, there's only one sandbox, can't be everywhere at once, but hopefully it gets out there, gets the word out about EPSCOR and, and what science is being done here for Alaskans. All right, that sounds really interesting, and I can't wait to get my hands in the sand and try this out for myself. Mm -hmm. We're going to demonstrate this here in our next segment of Alaska Weather Facts, but before we go, we want to remind you that EPSCOR, which is a, a new acronym for me now, but I'm going to remember this because you can follow them on Facebook and Twitter, and I invite you to do that. Alaska EPSCOR uh, is also uh, something that facilitates science learning at uh, the University of Alaska around the state, and that stands for Experimental Program to Stimulate Competitive Research. So check that out, and make sure you tune in tomorrow because we're going to have the next version where we actually get our hands in the sand and check out how this works and demonstrates that topography. So for now, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with this edition of Alaska Weather Facts and we'll see you again next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back and we conclude our show with the marine weather segment and the sea ice edge. The sea ice that remains there in the northern Bering continues to melt off. Uh, still uh, areas there around St. Uh, Lawrence Island, but it'll again be retreating and melting off rather quickly here over the next week or two. As we go up through the strait, there are uh, mainly open areas of ice still, some shore fast ice there along uh, the lower Chukchi Sea northwest coast, as well as along the uh, Arctic coast. And we do anticipate uh, areas to open up. It was rather breezy this weekend. Winds won't be quite as strong along the Arctic coast, but still brisk there. Areas especially around and south of Wainwright, we expect uh, uh, easterly offshore flow as high as uh, 20 to near 30 knots at times. It may cause this ice to shift around further, so be careful if venturing out. Otherwise, in the southeast, Another round of uh, rain showers or light rain will be working northward across the especially central northern panhandle on Monday. Uh, we expect southeast to south winds 25 knots, inner channels, waves running 4 or 5 feet as high as 8 feet there around Dixon entrance. Outer Gulf Coast, open waters, southeast winds 20 to 25 knots, waves 7 to perhaps as high as 9 to 10 feet, especially there south Sitka. And then on Tuesday, winds do come down a bit there in the inner channels, uh, east to northerly, 10 knots, Petersburg up through Lynn Canal with waves a couple of feet. Northwest winds, 15 knots, three foot waves there down around uh, Ketchikan and Metlakatla. Look for more of an easterly offshore flow, 20 to 25 knots with waves uh, running from eight to near 10 feet in the open waters. The northwestern gulf, uh, rather lighter winds, 10 to 15 knots, even variable in the vicinity of Prince William Sound and off the Kenai waves, just a couple of feet in Prince William Sound, as well as the bulk of, uh, as we go through uh, Cook Inlet. And uh, we expect uh, winds to maybe pick up just a little bit on Tuesday. Easterly 15 knots, Prince William Sound waves two, three feet. Generally, uh, southwesterly 10 to 15 knots uh, as we get up through mid and upper Cook Inlet, especially north of Homer toward Anchorage, waves two to three feet there, and then easterly winds 15 to 20 knots with five, six foot waves at the entrance of Cook Inlet and northeast of Kodiak. Kodiak Island on Monday will see variable winds 10 knots, Shelikoff Strait. Uh, otherwise, north northeast winds uh, 15 to 20 knots, 20 knots south of the island. Westerly down on the south uh, side, uh, and the, the North Pacific side of the uh, peninsula for Monday. Generally variable winds around 10 knots there, Bristol Bay down through the uh, Bering side with waves just a couple of feet. 
Tuesday, winds will pick up more out of the northeast along the uh, Gulf and North Pacific side. Northeast winds to 20 knots around Kodiak Island southward with waves generally in the five to six foot range. Winds are a little more variable. Uh, southeasterly, Bristol Bay, 15 knots, waves three feet. Variable winds north of Cold uh, Bay. And then across the Aleutian chain, rather light winds, generally variable winds, only around 10 knots, maybe northwesterly south of Nikolsky and Unalaska, but waves generally two, three feet across much of the region. And uh, even more so Tuesday, rather quiet conditions, variable winds around 10 knots and waves just running a couple few feet with areas of lower cloudiness and some patchy fog. Along the southwest coast, winds will uh, be northeasterly out of northern, uh, out of Norton Sound at 20 knots, waves three to four feet there. And then more northerly winds running down uh, the east side of uh, the Bering, uh, south of St. Lawrence, west of Nunavak, 20 to 25 knots, waves five to six feet. And on Tuesday, north winds continue there, Norton Sound, 20 knots, four foot waves and waves uh, between Nunavik Island and St. Lawrence out of the north to 25 knots, five to seven foot waves, but variable winds and two to three foot waves around St. Paul and St. George. Finally, for the north, along the Arctic coast, 15 to 20 knots easterly with areas of ice still in place. Strongest winds will be from uh, Wainwright down through uh, Cape Lisbon and Point Hope. East to northeast winds, 30 knot offshore flow could cause the ice there to shift around and move turning more north to northwest, 20 to 25 knots through the Bering Strait. And then on Tuesday, winds will generally be out of the east-northeast along the Arctic coast of Kaptovik through Utyadvik. Northeasterly though, uh, 25 to 30 knots through the lower Chukchi Sea along the northwest coast and west there of Kotzebue Sound, uh, continuing out of the north uh, there, passing through the Bering Strait to the north side of Nunavik Island. And on Monday, we have a weak trough, low pressure remaining over uh, the Alaska Range with scattered showers, a few isolated storms, area of rain over the panhandle will be overspreading and spreading westward into uh, south central areas by Tuesday. Have a good night. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.